Hello everybody, today I will be talking about the Australian Cruiser Tank, commonly abbreviated as AC. In this video I will go over the main variants, the AC-1 and the three other ACs built off it. In this video I will go over the history, the features and the usage. But first. Intro. Need for a tank. By the time the Second World War had started Australia's tank corps was in a sad state. They didn't even have any tanks until 1927, when they got four Vickers Medium Mark II to be crewed by the first tanks section. The Great Depression a few years later halted the development of tanks in Australia. In 1937 the first tank section was disbanded in 1937 to supply the newly created first light tank company. At the start of World War II Australia was desperate for British and American tanks, but due to logistical and geographical problems they only got American light tanks by 1941 and British heavy tanks by 1942. Development on AC-1 The AC-1 was a cruiser tank, meaning that it was intended to be cheap, fast and easy to manufacture. The AC-1 was designed and built in response to the war in Europe, and the threat of Japan's raising influence in the Pacific and an invasion of Australia. The AC-1 was designed in 1940 and was intended to have the British two-pounder cannon and was intended to be around 16 to 20 tons. Because Australia had no experience designing tanks they needed the help of America and Britain, who sent Colonel W.D. Watson M.C. who had many years of tank design experience. Like the Canadian Ram tank, the AC-1's design was to be based off of the engine, transmission and lower hull of the American M3 medium tank, which would be mated to an upper hull that would be similar to the British Crusader. By 1942, the design had become more like an American medium tank and was a several tons heavier and bigger than had been originally designed. The AC-1 tank was finished and designated Sentinel in February 1942 and was built by the NSW Railway Company. Features of the AC-1 The AC-1 weighed 28.4 tons, which was 8.5 tons more than planned. It was 2.56 meters tall, 2.77 meters wide and 6.32 meters long. It had a crew of five, a driver and hull machine gunner in the hull and the usual gunner, loader and commander in the turret. The AC-1 was also the first tank in the world to be fully cast, which was an amazing achievement, and enabled Australia, which had a limited manufacturing ability to produce its own tank. Its main armament was the British two-pounder, 40 mm, and 130 rounds could be fit inside the tank. It also had two 7.7 mm Vickers machine guns with 4,250 spare bullets. The AC-1 was powered by three Cadillac V8 330 horsepower engines, which gave it a horsepower to weight ratio of 12, which was pretty standard for a World War II tank. Its suspension was horizontal volute spring, which was common on American tanks of World War II. It had an operational range of 240 km and a maximum speed of 48 km per hour. Usage By June 1943, 65 production vehicles had been completed. The Sentinel tanks that were completed were only used for testing and were not assigned to operational armored forces. The Australian cruiser tank program was cancelled in July 1943 because it was determined that it would be more beneficial for Australia to devote the resources spent on the AC tanks to the development of its own railway locomotives and the support of the large number of US tanks expected to arrive. The tanks that had been built were put into storage until the war ended. In 1943, the 3rd Army Tank Battalion received AC-1 tanks that had been converted to look like German tanks. These tanks were utilized for the filming of the Rats of Torbruck. Failure of the AC-2 Project In 1941 the USA suggested that Australia should make a new design of the AC that utilized components built and supplied in America. This proposal, envisaged the use of commercial truck engines and mechanical components. 
there were many limitations to this design, mainly being that the weight had to be kept under 16-18 tons which would lead to a reduction in armor thickness, and they would have to use the 2-pounder, 40 mm gun instead of a 17-pounder of 25-pounder gun that would become available on the ACI and ASIF. The truck mechanical components were not powerful enough to cope with a vehicle heavier than this. In September 1941, therefore, the AC-2 design was abandoned, and attention was given once more to the AC-1. ACI Development by the time the ACI was running off the production line in 1942, its two-pounder gun had become obsolete in the face of improved Panzer IVs and the Tigers and Panthers. Because of this a 25-pounder, 87 mm, howitzer was put in the turret of the second day sea hull and tested on the 29th of June 1942. The results were a success and a modified 25-pounder that was shortened for jungle use was tested on October 10, 1942. The 25-pounder made the turret more cramped but gave the CINT armor capabilities and a good high explosive shell for fortifications and enemy infantry. Changes from the ASA the hull machine gunner was removed from the tank to make space for the larger ammunition. The ACI's three engines were mounted one radially on a common crankcase and geared together to form the Perrier Cadillac 17.1 liters, 24-cylinder engine. This gave it a good speed increase over the ASA and gave it an extra 80 km operational range. AC for the finished product. By 1943, with the realization that big doesn't always mean better the Australians started looking for a better cannon for their AC. The 17-pounder was chosen to replace the 25-pounder. The 17-pounder was better than the 25-pounder because it fired rounds a lot faster so the rounds had more energy to penetrate more armor. The other advantage of the 17-pounder was the smaller and lighter ammunition which meant that more could be carried and it could be loaded easily. To make sure that the AC-4 would be able to mount the 17-pounder, two 25-pounder guns were mounted on a modified ACI hull so that the recoil would exceed the 17-pounder and would prove the AC-4 could mount the 17-pounder. This configuration was tested on 2nd of November 1942. It was fitted with the 17-pounder after successful testing on the 17th of November 1942. The AC-4 had to have a redesigned turret to fit the 17-pounder, changes included a 1.78 meters diameter turret ring, the space for the changes were accommodated by changes to the upper hull that was possible to the small and compact nature of the Perrier Cadillac engine. The AC-4 underwent various changes, including internal stowage changes, the removal of the turret basket, the inclusion of a gyro stabilizer, the switch from hydraulic to electric traverse transmission, and the replacement of the volute spring with a torsion bar suspension. There were plans to build a total of 510 AC-4 tanks, with 110 to be the A variant which would have the old 25-pounder. Sadly the design was not complete by the time the AC program was terminated in July 1943. In conclusion the AC tanks were medium tanks designed under British doctrine with British guns and mostly American engines. It was a very interesting design and the fact that it went further than a prototype or wooden mock-up proved that it could very well have seen combat. While the AC series of tanks were great first attempts at building a tank, there was one big problem with the program, the Australian Army was being supplied in larger numbers of tanks by the USA and Britain. Thanks for watching all the way through.